Hello and welcome to a video on analyzing polynomial functions that are already factored. So when we are analyzing a polynomial function that's already factored, we're going to follow these eight steps. So first we're going to look at uh, intercepts and end behavior. That's sort of before we even take out our calculator, we look at these three things. Um, x-intercept, y-intercept, and uh, end behavior, including the multiplicity of x-intercepts. Then we're going to graph it. Once we graph it, we're going to get the local maxes and mins off of the graph and all of the details from the graph. And then we're going to look at the domain range and where the function is increasing and decreasing. So the first thing is to look at the function and think about x-intercepts and y-intercepts and end behavior. So as far as x-intercepts, we set each factor equal to zero. So we start out with x minus 1 equals 0. We go x plus 4 equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0. And x squared plus 1 equals 0. And we're looking for values that will make any of those four factors 0. So the first one's pretty straightforward. If x minus 1 equals 0, that means x equals 1. That's an x-intercept. If x plus 4 equals 0, that means x equals negative 4. There's another x-intercept. If x minus 3 equals 0, then we know that x equals 3. That's another x-intercept. And when x squared plus 1 equals 0, it's a little bit um, more complicated. So we'd have to try to solve this. So we say x squared equals negative 1. Take the square root of both sides, and x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 1. And that is plus or minus i. Square root of negative 1 is i. Well, that's a 0, but it's not a real 0. So this is no real zeros from that factor. From that last factor does not generate any real zeros. In other words, no x-intercept. No real 0 means no x-intercept. They're the same thing. Okay, but the others are all zeros. So now we need to just look at the multiplicity of each one of the zeros that we did find, the 1, the negative 4, and the 3. So we look at the exponents here, and this is an exponent of 1 and 1, implied exponents. So these each have a multiplicity of 1. But this x minus 3, which gave us 3 for the 0, has a multiplicity of 2. And multiplicity of 1 means that it's going to be t uh, just crossing the x-axis, and a multiplicity of 2, which is even, means it's going to be just bouncing off or just touching the x-axis. All right, so we've got that basic information. Um, no x-intercept from this one, so we really don't have to include that in our, in our analysis. Um, and then let's look at end behavior. So end behavior comes from looking at the first term. And the first term, you can see it by canceling out all of these pluses and minuses, and then just kind of compressing the function um, from what we have left. That's going to give us the first term of the polynomial, which the end behavior will come from. So it's going to be just a colon here. y equals negative 2 times x to the first times another x to the first times x squared. And then now that other x does matter. Even though it didn't give us any zeros, it's still part of the end behavior model, so we still want to include that. So we get y equals negative 2x to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's our model. Okay, and that means that on the outside of the function, it's going to do what, what uh, a 6 degree negative power function does. It's going to go down on both sides. It'll be something like this. But only on the out. We don't, we're not talking about the inside. We're just talking about on the outside. That's what it's going to look like on the outside of the function. And the last thing would be the, the y-intercept. If we set, if we find f of 0, we're going to get the y-intercept. So that's going to be negative 2 times 0 minus 1. So that's negative 1 times 0 plus 4. So that's going to be 4 times 0 minus 3 squared. So minus 3 squared times 0 plus 1. 0 squared plus 1, which is still just 1. All right, so what do we get here? Uh, that's 9 times 4 is 36 times, these are 2, so 36 times 2 is 72. So there's the y-intercept. All right, so what, that's the basics that you find before you put this in the calculator. Now the next thing is you get a graphing calculator or you get the graphing calculator app, app or you can use Desmos if you want, but I, 
I prefer that you use one of the other two um, because that's what I do all demonstrations on. And um, just plug in the equation exactly like you see it, not, not, with, uh, not with anything crossed out, just the original equation. Plug it into your calculator, and then I'll give you a sketch of what that's going to look like. So there's what the graph looks like. This is a little bit hard to see on the graphing calculator screen, but we know a lot of things about it. So I kind of kept this stuff here in mind when I graphed it. it took a long time to finally realize I had to go all the way up to 3000 to get to that. I kept, uh, you know, jumping up and saying, wow, where's the top of that? I know there's a local map somewhere, but eventually you find it. And, um, and then you, this part gets a little bit fuzzy and a little harder to read by the time you find that. So we kind of have to remember what we know here. And we know that there's an intercept here at negative four. We know that there's a positive intercepts at one and three and the one at three is touching. So we know there's an intercept here at one and there's one here at three where it's just bouncing off of the axis. So I kind of had to um, use a little bit of that and draw it so that I can actually see what's happening to draw it. Okay, but that's the intercepts. And then we also know that there's a y-intercept at 72, so I can put this point here is 72. All right, what we need to find is we need to find this local max, so we'll find that as an ordered pair. We need to find this local min, so we'll find that as an ordered pair. And we already know that since the, the function touches at 3, 0, we know that that's a local max because it bounces off and it comes back down. So we just need to find those two. So we'll take a minute and we'll look at our calculator and find those local maxes and mins, the two that we need there. Okay, so having found the local max and local min, we're ready for the last part of the problem, which is just to state the domain, which is all real numbers, the range, which being uh, has a local max here at the highest point on the function is 2915, so the range goes from negative infinity up to that 2915.5. It includes that, but of course it doesn't include infinity. Increasing and decreasing. So reading from left to right, the function is increasing until it reaches its local max at negative 3.1. So from negative infinity to 3.1, it's increasing. Then it's decreasing until it reaches its local min at 2. So it's decreasing from that local max at three point, at a negative 3.1, sorry, that's a negative right there, so it's based on that x value. So it's decreasing from negative 3.1 all the way to the local min at 2.0. And then it increases until it reaches that x-intercept at 3. So it's going to increase from 2.0 to 3, just exactly 3. And then it's going to decrease from 3 to infinity. Okay, and so that is the last part of our analysis. Of course, the graph is important. Our end behavior model, our y-intercept, and our x-intercepts along with their multiplicity. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.